spirit of the Lord consume me. Take my life, a living sacrifice. I will worship you forever. Holy Spirit, fill me. Fill my life completely. Fill me with your strength and power. Let your name be glorified. This is what? Same. Oh, this is same. Uh, actually, same. Same. Oh, same. Oh, okay. okay. You sing that, ah? Uh? that, uh? Okay. We are holy nation, ah? Uh? Ah, oh, okay, okay. Ah, oh, okay. Take me for a gift. Okay, master. This thing. Amen. Good to see all of you tonight. Let's uh, stand to our feet and let's lift up our hands to the Lord and just uh, worship Him and praise Him tonight before we begin our service. Hallelujah, Lord. Shiki anda rapapa basandai. Lord, we praise your name, Lord, tonight. We worship you, hallelujah, Lord. We invite you here this evening, Lord. Holy Spirit, this evening you're welcome, hallelujah. Help us to praise the Lord, hallelujah. Robo shanda rapapa basandai. Hallelujah, amen. We're going to sing this song. Come on, everybody. Come on, everybody, let's clap along and sing this song. Come on, everybody, come on, everybody, let us praise the Lord. Jesus is coming, Jesus is coming soon. Come on, everybody, come on, everybody, let us praise the Lord. Jesus is coming, Jesus is coming soon. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Hallelujah. Humble thyself in the sight of the Lord Humble thyself in the sight of the Lord And He will lift you up High and higher Humble thyself in the sight of the Lord Humble thyself in the sight of the Lord And He will lift you up Come on everybody, hallelujah Come on everybody, come on everybody Let us praise the Lord Jesus is coming, Jesus is coming So, yes, come quickly, Lord Come on, everybody, come on, everybody Let us praise the Lord Jesus is coming, Jesus is coming So, oh, 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 see Give us the kingdom of God and His righteousness And all these things shall be added unto you Hallelujah Humble thyself tonight Humble thyself in the sight of the Lord Humble thyself the sign of the Lord and He will lift you up high and higher. Humble thyself in the sight of the Lord. Humble thyself in the sight of the Lord and He will lift you up. Every knee shall bow tonight. Hallelujah. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue, every tongue confess. Jesus Christ is Lord forever. Every knee, hallelujah. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue confess. 
Jesus Christ is Lord forever And stop praising His name tonight Can't stop praising His name Oh, I just can't stop praising His name Oh, I just can't stop praising the name of Jesus Can't stop praising His name Oh, I just can't stop Praising His name, oh I just can't stop Praising the name of Jesus Every knee tonight shall bow, hallelujah Every knee shall bow Every tongue confess Jesus Christ is Lord forever Every knee shall bow Every tongue confess Jesus Christ is Lord forever Can't stop praising His name tonight Can't stop praising His name Oh, I just can't stop praising His name Oh, I just can't stop praising the name of Jesus Can't stop praising His name Oh, I just can't stop praising His name Oh, I just can stop praising the name of Jesus Holy fire, hallelujah Holy fire You're my complete desire Spirit of the Lord Consume me Take my life tonight Take my life A living sacrifice I will worship you forever Holy Spirit fill me Fill my life completely Fill me with your strength and power Let your name be Glorify Holy fire tonight Holy fire You're my complete desire Spirit of the Lord Consume me Take my life A living sacrifice I will worship you forever we are holy nation We are holy nation A chosen generation Who declare the praises of God And to spoil the enemy Let's praise the Lord. Let's worship Him. Hallelujah. Lord, we praise you tonight. Hallelujah, Lord. Lord, this evening. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We want to worship you. Shara Baba. Let's sing this song. Take me into the Holy of Holies. Take me past the outer course. Through the holy place, past the brazen altar, Lord, I want to see your face. Pass me by the crowds of people and the priests who sing their praise. I hunger and thirst for your righteousness, but it's only found one place. Take me into the holy of holies Take me in by the blood of the Lamb Take me into the holy of holy. Take the cold, cleanse my lips, here I am Take me past the outer courts Through the holy place Past the brazing altar 
Lord, I want to see your face pass me by the crowds of people and the priests who sing their praise. I hunger and thirst for your righteousness, but it's only found one place. Take me in to the holy of holies. Take me in by the blood of the Lamb. Take me into the holy, a holy. Cleanse my lips, cleanse my lips. Here I am. Take me in, hallelujah. Take me into the holy, a holy. Take me in by the blood of the Lamb. Take me into the holy of holies. Take the gold, cleanse my lips. Here I am. One more time, take me in. Take me into the holy of holies. Take me in by the blood of the land. Take me in. The holy of holies, take the cool, cleanse my lips. Here I am. Take me into the holy of holies, take me in by the blood of the Lamb, take me into the holy. Of holy, take the coal, cleanse my lips. Here I am. Take the coal, take the coal, cleanse my lips. Here I am. Take the coal tonight. Take the coal, cleanse my lips. Here I am. Hallelujah. Worship, yes, worship the Lord. Rabba, baba, 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 sanda, rabba, rabba, sanda. Ya la 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 ra da ra bo sanda. Let's praise the Lord tonight. Hallelujah. Robo kianda. Hallelujah. We shout unto you, Lord. Make a joyful noise unto you. We magnify you. Randa, rabba, baba, sanda. Ya la la. You are great God, a loving God. A forgiving God, Hallelujah! Kind God, Ramanda, Siondo Salala Rondo Shalaranda Karaba Ba Ba Ba, Shialala Raba Ba 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 Sunday. Hallelujah! Father, in the name of Jesus, we bring tonight our loved ones before you in prayer, and. Many of our loved ones are not safe. Uh, they do not know you. I heard today's news that in Gaza, oh Lord, you you visited nearly two hundred Palestinians in dreams, and you you begin to in that dream begin to show them show yourself to these people, and and these two hundred Palestinians are now. Asking about you and seeking after you and wanting to know you, and this is a miracle, God, because it happens in the book of Acts. You did this to Saul on the road to Damascus. You appeared to him in the light. You spoke to him, and tonight we want to bring our loved ones as well before you, Lord. Our loved ones were not saved. That you would give them dreams. That you will give them vision, Lord. We're living in the last days. The heart of men have become very hard. They are full of the world. Or thinking about money, buying new cars, buying new houses. Only think about material things. They want to live a life that is have nothing to do with you. And God, they need a supernatural visitation. Lord, we ask of you, you're no respect of people. And just as you did that for the Palestinians, you, 
You even did that in Iran and heard many testimonies of Iranian people having dreams. And when they woke up to their dreams, they begin to turn, turn to you, go to churches, become Christians. And Lord, for our country, for our people here, for our families, likewise, we ask you to do so. For those who are still fasting and praying until December 15, we ask that God, you begin to show them what to pray, grant them the strength to pray, Lord Almighty. And even we bring the coming Christmas Eve service, our oh Lord, we want to break through. We want to see people get saved, added to the church. Lord, families saved, for oh Lord, a mighty visitation of the Holy Spirit. Lord, even we pray for the gift of healing. Lord, there are a lot of people need healing. These days, people are getting sick. People are having health issues. And Lord, one of the gifts is a gift of healing. Give this church of people the gift of healing. You say, lay hands on the sick. Miracle of healing takes place, O oh Lord. Lord, bless the night's service. We humble ourselves before you. We need you in our life. Help us, O oh Lord, to live a Christian life full of love for you and for one another. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Speak clap to the Lord. Amen. And thank you very much, musician. You can turn around and greet one another if you want. And uh, we want to welcome you to God's house. Amen. Hallelujah. And... Uh, <clears throat> so uh, tomorrow night uh, we are going to the PJ Church and um, they're having a woman's uh, fellowship down there and also a men's meeting so if you'd like to come along just let me know so 13 of us are going down to PJ the service there starts at 8 o'clock uh, in PJ so, uh, us sing will follow Daniel, okay? Daniel will pick you up. And uh, Rita, will, I will pick you up. And uh, Indra, you're going with Angie, okay? You want to come along? Uh, Pushpa, Mala, you want to come along? Okay. So, Catherine will go with uh, Angie. And um, I'll go with my family and then... Jordan, you're going by yourself. Where's Jordan? Jordan, you're driving yourself. Okay. So Jasper will drive himself there. Amen. So let's bow our heads tonight. We want to um, give our offerings to the Lord. And bless every giver, God, in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. So we want to turn to First Corinthians chapter 13 and uh, we've been doing this study for quite some time every Wednesday night and we are looking at chapter 13 of First Corinthians and uh, we are looking on the subject of love. Okay? So what love is all about and um, it begins from verse 4. Okay. Last week we looked at love suffers long, love is kind, love is not jealous, love does not envy. So someone say um, love is like, uh, without love is like french fries without salt. Okay. Um, if you are a lover of french fries, you you will need to you need to have some salt on your French fries. If you eat French fries without salt, it's like you're not really getting the taste of it. And life without love, if your heart is without love, it's like uh, eating French fries without salt. Okay, there's no flavor in it. So we understand about First Corinthians chapter thirteen about the importance of love. 
whereby God says that if you have if you if you can speak like angels but have not love in verse one uh, you just sound only you just make sound only and you can have the gift of prophecy and you understand deep things mysteries and uh, you have all knowledge you are so knowledgeable you know everything but if you and if you have faith that faith so strong that you can speak to a mountain and the mountain be removed but if you have not love uh, paul says we are nothing and if you can be a giver of goods to feed the poor even to the point of giving your body to be burned but if you have not love it will not gain you anything okay and verse 4 uh, paul begins to speak about what love is what love is all about okay so verse 4 the first one is say love suffers long so last week we understand i give you an illustration it's like it's like a bomb Okay, with a long fuse, suffer long. Um, when during our younger times, you're allowed to buy firecrackers, and we used to buy firecrackers and and burn it, you know. And firecrackers got small one, got big one, got big ones some more, but the fuse are very small. In a few seconds, if you don't throw it. He will I've, I've got my hand blasted a few times before because I was too slow to throw it so and uh, love suffer long you got a long fuse it takes very long for you to boom if you were to explode it takes you very long long time to explode that's love number one last week we learned love is kind you show kindness to people. You are always thinking about people. You are always concerned about people. Your mind is always trying to see how to be of a blessing to others. And the tree last week we understand love does not envy, it's not green. Green with envy, that's a word they use, a term used. Green with envy. When you see other people bless, you're not disturbed you are happy okay you are you are happy that people are blessed you're not sad when people are blessed uh, uh, and love does not envy so we want to look at love does not parade itself the word parade itself is does not does not sing its own praise you don't self praise there's a phrase during school days Self-praise is international disgrace, something like that. You ever heard of it? Self-praise is international disgrace. Okay. But and love does not sing your own praise. You don't you don't sing about how great you are, you know, you don't tell people you know, how wonderful a person you are, you know. You don't go and you you have no high opinion of self. Okay? You're not a person that when people sit around you, all they hear is about you. You talk about yourself, you talk about what you have, you talk about your family, you talk about all, you're not a person that goes about talking about yourself. You don't pat yourself in front of people. Wow, I am such a wonderful person. You know, it's like this cartoon in the Star Paper, uh, Croc. Mr. Croc, I don't know whether you've seen that cartoon, and it's called the Legionnaires. It's like those French soldiers, and there's this one very handsome uh, officer, Mr. Prippy. His name is. It's a cartoon, okay? But they don't have this anymore in Star Paper, and he always look at the mirror, and you say, "Look at that person! How handsome that person is!" You know, he's always praising himself. You know. So we got this self praise, always, always uh, putting, put, uh, protecting himself. Uh, love does not parade itself. It's not 
does not okay, sing his own praise. There is this scripture in Matthew chapter 6, verse 1. And uh, if you want to look at it, it's Jesus speaking. And Jesus says, verse 1, Take heed that you do not do your charitable deeds before men to be seen by them. Okay? Otherwise, you have no reward from your Father in heaven. Okay? Jesus is warning that if you do something that's charitable to people, for people, uh, don't go and do it to show off. You know, uh, you pick out a big check and you give it to so and so, you know, and you're showing off. Don't. So it's, it's, it does not parade itself, love. Now, in this 1 Corinthians chapter 13, we find there are eight, um, uh, chapter 13, verse uh, 4 down. Four onwards, there eight does not, eight love does not envy, love does not parade itself, love is not puffed up, love does not behave rudely, love does not seek its own, love is not provoked, love thinks no evil, love does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoice in the truth. And uh, there are eight of them, eight negative things that he said love should not be this way. Okay. So uh, it begins with love does not envy and then it goes down to love does not parade itself. True love is more impressed uh, on its unworthiness, on your unworthiness than on your greatness. Uh, true love, you, you, and, and when you look at yourself, you look at your unworthiness, you you're more impressed with your unworthiness rather than your greatness. You may be great, okay? Um, but you, time and time again, you begin to look at the unworthiness of you and not speak about your greatness and how great you are, okay? So the first thing uh, tonight, we look at the fourth thing, sorry. The last three we looked at last week is the fourth thing is love does not parade itself okay the fifth thing about love is does not is not puff up uh, not arrogant it's not does not inflate its own importance <clears throat> it hum uh, love humbles the soul to the dust someone says a true love Esteem others higher than yourself. Uh, again, no high opinion of self. And it kind of sounds like the fourth one. Love does not parade itself. I guess um, this is one of the issues that, that, that God begins to um, kind of hammer in, press in, because the heart of people have this tendency of falling into parading or, or puffing or boasting yourself. Okay? And um, he began to say, love is not puffed up. No high opinion of self. Really great men never think of his own importance. Uh, William Carey says that, that great men or women never think of his own importance. So, the fifth thing is that it says that love is not puffed up. Sixth thing is love does not behave rudely. Now, <clears throat> this love that is mentioned here is, is we need the Holy Spirit to help us to have this kind of love. On our own, we cannot. We cannot love the way that God wants us to love here. Okay? We need God's help to be able to love as, as worded here. But anyway, the sixth thing is love does not behave rudely. Rude means impolite or bad manners. 
speaking in the way or behaving in the way that's not polite, likely to offend uh, other people. Or another word is unbecoming. Okay? Behavior that is not attractive. There is this um, uh, uh, many years I saw this YouTube uh, channel about um, in China whereby they begin to in the, in the dinner table whereby they begin to put food on the table and instead of sitting down quietly and begin to take their portion what they do is they grab you know they grab the food instead they grab everybody is grabbing the food they're not sitting down eating quietly and taking their portion and let other people take their portion um, there's one story I heard about in a church whereby they have food after service and um, there is this person that that you know when when they serve food in the church it's like everybody share the food okay and everybody eat their portion but there was one particular person that came with the uh, what they call that tifia carrier that food carrier and and this person drives a drives a mercedes but after the service she will be the first one to take the tipia carrier, put the food in, plastic bag, put the food in, and she tapa bale, and without you know, uh, like seeing that everybody get their share first before if there's leftover, then only take. But she, she, she's not like that. She take first. She put the tipia carrier, plastic bag, and take home. Uh, instead of uh, allowing others to do so. And love is not rude, okay? Okay, not impolite, uh, not unbecoming, uh, behavior that is unsuitable or ugly or unattractive. And uh, the seventh thing, love does not seek its own. The word seek his own there is seek his own ways or own advantage or insist on his ways. Okay. That means love never demands his right. Never preoccupy with self. Okay. Uh, love is not selfish love, own pleasure, own profit, own honor, whereas true love is unselfish. Okay. So in the marriage, um, is it's not what is yours is mine and what is mine is mine. Okay? What is yours is mine and what is mine is yours okay? in a marriage. So does not seek its own. And number eight, uh, love does not, is not provoked. Love is not aroused to a spirit of anger, bitterness by injuries, actual or imagined. It could not be true, it could be just imagined. And love is not aroused to a spirit of anger, bitterness by injuries, actual or imagined. If it's actual, you're not aroused to the spirit of anger, or imagine, you're not also aroused to the spirit of anger. Provoke means de deliberately make someone angry. Stimulate or give rise to a reaction. Incite, irritate. Okay. Provoke. There's two words in that word provoke. One is pa, pata. At the point of moving forward, the word pata means, then the other word is ozuno. A O X U N O, to sharpen, to a point of moving forward to sharpen. The story of Moses, okay, even this great man Moses, okay, and um, there was this story about this um, great prophet called Morris Serrero. I don't know whether you heard of him. 
But he one time asked the Lord, I want to be like Moses. And the Lord says to him, why you want to be like Moses? Wow, Moses is such a great leader, God. You know, he's led three million people across the Red Sea and by his rod. And then God said, do you know that Moses killed somebody? Oh, and he says, okay, I don't want to be like Moses. Then I want to be like Abraham. And then he said, why you want to be like Abraham? Then he says, Abraham has so much faith. You told him to go to a place that uh, you didn't tell him where he's going. And uh, he's aged 75 years old. And he went, not knowing where he's going. So much faith. Then, the, then God asked him, do you know that Abraham lied about his wife? When, they, when the king wanted his wife, he says, that's my sister, that's not my wife. Oh, oh then I don't want to be like Abraham. And he said, I want to be like David. Why you want to be like David? David is such, he said, David is such a great warrior. But do you know that David committed adultery? You know, with Bathsheba? Oh, okay, then no. He wants to be like Jesus at the end of the day. So Moses, we find in the book of Numbers 20, 11 to verse 12, he got... Okay, let's turn to Moses, not Moses, turn to Numbers 20. The people that, so he got to him. This is what he did, Numbers chapter 20, 11 to verse 12. Can one of you read that? Moses did not get to enter the land of promise. What happened was that God asked him to speak to the rock. But the children of Israel so disturbed him that he took the rod and beat the rock twice. His outburst, he was provoked to a sudden outburst of anger that he, he beat it twice and God says you know what you didn't listen to me you should have just speak to the rock I told you to speak to the rock instead you hit the rock out of anger and Moses never get to cross the get into the promised land you know he's taking millions of people to the promised land and he never got to go he only got to see and he never got to go and it all happened because of this outburst of uh, his sudden outburst uh, caused him not to enter. We go down to back to First Corinthians chapter thirteen. Love thinks no evil. Okay. Um, uh, a few years back, my sister was telling me that um, she had an exercise book and. And the exercise book she has, my, my sister, she's now, I think, 80 years old, girl, 70 something, 80 years old. She's a Christian. And um, she has an exercise book. She's a school teacher during her days. And she actually is part of the church community, committee, community, committee. But there's someone there that really disturbs her. And what she does is, she got the exercise book and she write down what this person say. Okay, let's say today is what? 29. Today, 29 November, this person say something and then she'll write down that. This person say this, this, this at 10.30 in the morning. Say, and she write down many things. She, many, many months, many, many Many, many things that this person says she will write down. All the negative things. And one day, God spoke to her. Tear that book apart. Throw it away. Don't keep records of wrong. 
love here in verse number 9 or verse number, let me see, love verse number 5. Things no evil. This is the meaning of it. Does not keep records of wrong. Okay? You don't have an exercise book with you. Okay? You don't put down all the wrongs in your exercise book, in your heart. There's no. You learn to forget. You let go. Okay? And it's a great skill to learn. And that's why I say halfway just now, uh, this is something that we need the Holy Spirit to help us. Just like Peter was drowning and he called out to Jesus, help me Jesus, Jesus pulled him out. And love is such, okay, this kind of love, you know, human beings cannot on their own. You need God to help. True love have bad memory. You forget things very fast, okay. You have to. You can't keep it. There was one time I was angry with Pastor Joe Campbell. <laughs> I was angry with Pastor Joe Campbell. Many he's so so I, I felt like he didn't make a right decision on something. Me, this small little pastor, think that my big pastor didn't didn't handle it right. You know, and I keep it inside my heart. One day when he came down, he came down to Malaysia. I went up to him, I cannot already. I went down to him, Pastor, I've been angry with you, you no. Know? Can you forgive me? He looked at me with a smile, shake my hand, walk away, finish it, all gone. It's like, I say this to him, he didn't say, oh, you angry with me? Come sit down. Why do you angry with me? What was it? When do you get angry with me? When was the last time? What, what did I do to you? He didn't know. He just looked at me, shake my hand, done. Okay, let's go. So everything is for God. Love have. Uh, uh, love thinks no evil. You got, you got bad memory. You got a delete button. You know, uh, true love have a delete button. You delete away everything that people have uh, say about you, done about you, or whatever. You have a delete button. You press that button, is no more already. And uh, number number ten. Verse number six does not rejoice in iniquity. Okay, uh, the hostages you saw, and today I think we released the fourth one, uh, fourth group. Uh. And today you find that the, the show the one is the people in the the Palestinians were were celebrating, you know, um, they were very happy. But on the Israel side, they, they, I mean, they are not rejoicing over evil. They are rejoicing over the fact that these people, hostages, are set free. But on the other side, it's different. And love does not rejoice when you see someone fall, especially someone fall. It's like when, when, when the former prime minister fell, you know, though, you know, he did not rule the country in the right way and many people wanted him not to be there. And when he fall, Christians should not be, wow, good now, he fall. Yeah, you know, uh, serve him right, he fall. No, when someone fall, you, you don't smile, you don't, you don't clap your hands, you don't rejoice. You don't rejoice over a failure of somebody, moral failure, whatever failure. You, you're not happy, you're sad. You only rejoice in when, when there's truth, when there's good things you know, happen. Uh, not over wrongdoings. Now, we want to look at verse 7. Verse 7 says four things there. Bear all things, believe all things, Hope all things, endure all things. Love, love bear all things, believe all things, hope all things, endure all things. This is speaking about a continual present tense. 
Present tense means now. It's about now. Okay? Present tense. You continually bear all things. You continually believe all things. You continually hope all things. You continually endure all things in the present. Okay? You continually... Uh, love is a continual present tense thing in the very moment right now. Okay? Not about in the future only I'll bear all things. Not about in the future only I believe all things. Not about future only I hope all things. And not about future only, but it's about now. The first thing in verse 7 say, bear. Bear all things. The word is tergo, S-T-E-G-O. This word tergo have the idea of protecting others from harm. Okay? How you protect others from harm is you do not expose, you do not go about talking about the wrongdoing of other people. Okay? But you protect in a sense, you protect them. You don't, you don't gossip about them. You don't go around talking about them. You use a cloth of silence covering up what is displeasing in the other person. You don't go around talking about the other person's uh, uh, displeasing quality. Okay? You cover up their unworthy things rather than bringing them to the light. You, 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 you what do you call that? You don't broadcast. You don't broadcast a person's problems to other people. Okay? Um, whatever evil you see, whatever evil you hear, you, you mention it none okay, to other people around you. Now, there are things that you can come and talk to me as a pastor. It's only right. Okay? But what I'm saying, what God is saying, you don't go around talking to B, C, D, E okay, about this person, this, that person, this, that person. It's love bear all things, tergo. You have the meaning of cover. Okay? And it goes on to say, love believe all things. You believe all things mean believe the best of about others. Okay? You give people a benefit of doubt. Okay? You see the best in other people. You choose to believe the best and not the worst. Okay? Our flesh choose to believe the worst, but love choose to believe the best. Love believes a person is innocent until he is proven guilty. Not guilty until proven innocent. Okay? You choose to believe a person is innocent until he is proven guilty. If he's wrong, then, but before he is wrong, you choose to believe he's innocent okay, until he's proven guilty. Okay, so that's the word, uh, that is what it means to believe all things. Love, hope, all things. It continues to look for the good of others no matter the situation. There's a tripod stand, you know, in science. Uh, when during school, from four, from five, we go for science class. And there's this tripod stand. The uh, tripod stand means tree. Tree stand like that. Okay, tree pole and standing. And the burner will be up there. So the tripod stand, tree stand, will hold the burner, or hold the jug which we do science experiment. There's a Christian got three tripod stand. One is called faith. The other one is called love, right? The other one is called hope. So if you remove hope, it will fall. The three must be there. Love, faith, and hope. Love, hope, all things. You continually Look for the good, no matter the situation you are in. You continually hope things will turn out well. You look with confidence 
to that which is good. True love hope for what is good for another. Even when the person sees to hope, even when the person have given up hope, but you continually uh, look, uh, hope for what is good for that person. And lastly, love endure all things. This word endure all things is a military word. Military means a soldier word. Okay. It is a military word. It means you hold your position at all costs. It means if you are a soldier guarding the guard, uh, guard, guard door, you will hold your position at all costs. You will protect. You will be there no matter, uh, no matter what happens, even if your life, you know, even you may be harmed, you will still, you know, hold your position, no matter what cost. There was this, as you know, Afghanistan has been taken over by the Taliban a few years back. And the former president of Afghanistan, when the Taliban came, the first thing he do he did was he he didn't hold his position as the Prime Minister of uh, the President, he ran away. The first thing, the first person to run away from Afghan is this man, I don't know where he ran to, he ran to, he went to Dubai, I think. So he was having a good time there while his people are suffering there. He's supposed to stand like Zelensky, you know Zelensky, the Ukraine, Ukraine guy. He stand, he didn't run. Russia is such a big country, you know, and so so powerful, you know. And but he stand. This Linsky guy, he's short for the, but he stood and he protect and he fought and he fight, you know. He knows that he says I think fifty times his life has been, people try to assassinate him, try to kill him, you know. But he stand. But the other guy, he ran. And the whole Taliban took over without even a fight. There's no fight. Love endure all things. You stand no matter what. Now, verse 8 say love never fails. That's the thing about love. It will never fail you from eternity. He will never fail you to enter heaven. He will never fail you to have a relationship with God. Now replace the word love with Jesus. Verse 4, Jesus suffers long. And Jesus is kind. Jesus does not envy. Jesus does not, does not parade itself. Jesus is not puffed up. Jesus does not behave rudely. Jesus does not seek his own. Jesus is not provoked. Jesus thinks no evil. Jesus does not rejoice in iniquity. But rejoice. But rejoice. But rejoice in truth. Jesus bear all things. Jesus believes all things about you. Jesus hopes all things about you. Jesus can real all things. But we can't love this love on our own. We have to have Jesus to help us. Amen. We need Jesus because all of us, we live in this body, this flesh still with us. My flesh also, sometimes very selfish flesh. My heart. All of us, all of us here, God. We can't love on our own. On our own love, we feel we need the Holy Spirit. We need Jesus to fill us. Just like Peter called out to Jesus, Jesus, I'm sinking, I'm drowning, help me. Jesus, reach out and pull him out. Amen. So love never fails. Let's stand on our feet and let's ask God to help us to, to love as 
as, as this is the way he asks us to love. And Father, we come before you. You know us all very well. Even in the book of Psalms 86, you know about David. David many times call upon you and say, have mercy on me. David himself know what kind of person he is. He knows that if he doesn't have your mercy, he will fall. He will make mistakes. And Lord, tonight, we know that on our own, on our own we cannot love as this, this love that you mentioned is so only, only you can you can help us to love such a way. Our hearts are very small. Please fill us with your love. That we will love, love just as Jesus loved every day. We need you to fill us with your love. That at the end of the day, we will be people that suffers long, be people that will be kind, the people that will not parade ourselves, people that will not be envious, neither puff up, the people that will think no evil, that will bear all things, believe all things, hope all things, endure all things. And we thank you through the Holy Spirit that you will help us to love just as the Bible teaches to love, just as Jesus teaches to love. In Jesus Christ's name, and everybody say, Amen. Amen. Let's give a big clap to the Lord. God bless all of you. Amen.